one of my favorite things about classical guitar is the variety and the amount of sound that comes out of the instrument from two hands. Great classical guitar players create incredible tones, fast notes, slow notes, beautiful sounds, variety of sounds, and it's almost like you can't even see that they're moving at all. One of the most common ways that classical guitarists achieve this effect is through a simple arpeggio pattern, which is thumb, index, middle, and middle finger. We call those P, I, and M. So P, I, M arpeggios uh, make up a huge amount of the classical guitar literature and this special effect that is really, really beautiful. So in this video, we're going to learn how to play a thumb, index, finger, and middle finger arpeggio. One of the most important things to talk about from the very beginning is the position with which you hold the guitar, especially if you're gonna be advancing your right hand technique on the classical guitar. This is more important than you might think. So if you're used to holding the guitar down lower or even holding it standing up with a strap, humor me and sit down, get a footstool to put your left foot on to elevate it so that we can elevate the instrument or you can get a stand that will hold the guitar in this position. Now this position, is about 45 degree angle to the ground. That is to say that the headstock of the guitar is at about at my head level. So if I look over here to the left, it's that high. Another way to think about it is that the upper bout of the instrument, which is this curvy part, is right underneath uh, my chin. This elevates the strings, and this is super important for what we're going to do because the way our fingers go onto the strings should maintain a straight right wrist. And if we drop those strings down like this, then it tends to turn that wrist sideways. And we want to avoid that because we're going to be doing fancy things with the right hand. So we want to make sure that the wrist is as comfortable as possible, and that means a straight wrist. When setting up the right arm on the guitar, imagine a, an imaginary line goes through the bridge to the edge of the guitar, and about two inches in front of your elbow is where you want to place that right arm. We're gonna start with your thumb on string three. Now, I count the strings from the floor up. So string three is the G string, and we wanna find that third string with the thumb, put our pointer finger on string two, and our middle finger on string one, and the other ones can just hang and be relaxed there. As far as the hand itself goes, we want the plane of the back of the hand to be parallel to the plane of the face of the guitar. That's to say we don't wanna to lean toward the thumb side, we don't want to lean toward the pinky side. We don't want the wrist to be too low or the wrist to be too high. Speaking of wrist height, you can think of a little elevated uh, ramp leading up to a plateau that levels out at the top. So we want the plane of the back of the hand to be parallel to the plane of the face of the guitar. The fingers should be curved and relaxed. And I want to talk just a little bit about relaxed. We need to relax like crazy. Almost every adult student that I have that comes to learn classical guitar is way too tense in the right hand, and that tension gets in the way of fluid playing. It's really important to relax. So right now, think about your shoulders and think about how they feel. Connect with that feeling, and now relax those shoulders always a wonderful thing to do. And it's amazing because most of the time we're not connected to how our shoulders feel, right? But when you did that just now, you made a big difference just with your mind, just by thinking about relaxing. And so here's my challenge to you before going on to the next part of this video. Set up in your classical guitar technique, put your thumb on string three, your pointer finger on string two, and your middle finger on string one. Check all that technique and then relax. Let your shoulders down. Make sure that your fingers are feeling very, very soft. And then stand up, sit down, and do it again. So the first finger I want to talk about is this uh, pointer finger. Notice I've set up in my position. I've relaxed my shoulders. I've relaxed my fingers. And I'm going to play string number two with my pointer finger by pushing the finger through the string and past the thumb inside the hand. 
I'll do that one more time. Through the string, past the thumb, and inside the hand. Now this is how we practice relaxation. I kind of think of it like a relaxation sandwich. You want to relax before you play. Play. And then relax after you play. You need to relax not only the finger that's playing, but the other fingers. For example, I can play my pointer finger and all of a sudden feel just a little bit of pull in my middle finger. I need to undo that and use my mind to make sure that that's as relaxed as possible because this is the secret to fluidity. So this is very important to practice many times and be very careful about. So relax from the shoulder down, play, through the string, past the thumb and inside the hand, relax, and put the finger back down. Relax each and every joint of the finger and make sure that all the joints are working together. What you don't want to do is pull up in the air like that. You want to move through the string, past the thumb, and inside the hand. Now we'll do this with the middle finger. And with classical guitar, we always focus on bringing the ring and the pinky with the middle finger in a case like this. So here I am about to play my middle finger and I'm gonna move all three of those fingers together like a flipper. Looks like this. I'll do that one more time. I relax before I play. I play. And I relax after I play my forearm, my index finger, my middle finger and I put the finger back down. With the thumb, we just kind of let gravity do the trick. We go through string three and drop right to the outside of the index finger like this, nice and soft, and then replace the thumb. The thumb is one of the biggest tension causers that we have. Lots of times when we play the thumb, the fingers react and get pointy and get tense. It's extremely important that you become aware of this, especially if you're an adult because we adults do so much strong stuff and the guitar doesn't need any of that muscle. So we have to relax. Move the finger, make sure we're still relaxed, and then replace. I do this about 100 times a day per finger for five days and then come back and watch the next part of this video. So in this segment, we're going to learn about sympathetic motion and extension timing. These are critical elements for being able to play arpeggios quickly and simply. First thing we have to make sure of is that our strokes are relaxed. We've been talking about that, so now we're ready for this next concept. Index finger is followed by middle finger. Notice how both fingers are in the hand right now, and then they extend back to the string together as one unit. Index goes in, middle follows it. Another way to think of this is almost like the fingers are doing the wave. One drags the next one, and this allows for great facility in our arpeggio playing. So index finger, followed by middle finger, and then they go back out together. The key, of course, is to make sure that your fingers are relaxed before you play. One follows the other, and then relaxed after you play and then you replace them together. This is a great thing to practice all by itself. Okay, next is extension timing. And that is how we get all of this to go together. Let's begin with the thumb. When we play our fingers, we want the thumb to return to the string, specifically when we play the second finger. So I'll play I followed by M and return my thumb to the string. Now my thumb's ready to go. And when I play my thumb, I return my fingers. Notice that my fingers stay inside the hand when my thumb goes down. And my thumb stays in the air when my fingers go out. It's almost like I have a team thumb and a team fingers. When one goes in, the other one goes out. When we get good at this extension timing, it allows us to always have something ready to go. And that is the secret to constant speed.
So now that we've learned the basics of thumb, index finger, and middle finger arpeggio technique, we can learn a little song. I wrote a song called Dervish, which is a lot of fun, and right now I'd love to teach you just the first phrase of that particular song. It is an arpeggio where your index and middle fingers are playing open strings one and two the whole time. So all we have to learn are the thumb notes and then we can put it all together. Here are the thumb notes. E on fret two of string four. G on open string three. A on fret two of string three. Back to open G. And then three Bs in a row on fret four of string three. Let's just do that much. E, G, A, G, B, B, B. And if I add the arpeggio, it sounds like this. And if I go faster, it sounds like this. Kind of fun, right? Okay, so E, G, A, G, B, 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 G, open string three, two A's, a G, a D, an E, and a low E. So after those three B's, it was G, two A's, open G, open D, one E on string four, and low E. The whole thing sounds like this. Have fun. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to classical guitar technique, and I hope you found the information helpful. If you did, check out all of the other wonderful videos on sixstringranch.com. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about my work in arts administration, community service, and classical guitar education, go to matthewhinsley.com. I look forward to hearing from you.